The well-known XC6 controller has just received a cool upgrade, which I'll show you in this video. So what is the XC6? It is uh, this box in our XC series. It is modular, typically. It has large OLED displays that provide labels for all the buttons. And these are NKK broadcast style buttons. In the XC6, they were bicolored. In the new one, we have RGB colored buttons. And we also increased the display area for your convenience and other coolness. So uh, I'll just set this aside and quickly walk on to the XC6 over here. So in this video, we'll take a look at the configuration we have made for it that, that it ships with out of the box. You can make many other configurations and we'll also take a look at how that is done on the website. So if you look at the XC6 on the top view here, you see um, we have those uh, 36 buttons arranged in three rows with 12 buttons in each. On the back side, I have a single ethernet cable providing data connection and PoE. I also attached the USB cable, but that is only for the programming that I want to do later. So the way I've set this one up is I use the top row up here to um, basically select the function of the two lower rows. So in um, the first uh, four states, the controller will work with ME1, ME2, ME3 and ME4 of a video switcher. And in this case, I've connected it to an ATEM switcher. Uh, which we'll see, you see the software um, for the ATEM switcher right here. So as I change sources on preview, you can see this is reflected in the software. So we have um, uh, an easy way to validate all my claims. And um, yes, uh, maybe we'll, let's just go from there basically. So um, for ME1, I basically select sources on input and uh, on, on the preview and the program row. If I hold down the shift key I have assigned to this one up in the corner, you'll see all the labels are changing now. So they always reflect those labels. They reflect what happens when I press any of these buttons. So let's put Media Player 2 on uh, preview. And you see this reflected in the software as well. Media Player 2 is on preview right there. Okay, I assigned this to be a cut key. And um, now just to make sure that you don't mistake the function of this panel, it's not meant to be like a switching surface in a traditional sense where there's a cut and auto key and a T-bar. Obviously there's no T-bar, but it's a cool extension to the Master Key 1 controller or any of the other controllers we have that has the auto and cut key in an ME section uh, and the T-bar and so forth. So that if you want to extend the functionality of your controller, you could do it with a panel like this one. Okay, so just uh, to for this demonstration, and in case you um, uh, need it more as a routing panel, I put that cut key up in the corner. So let's go back to the panel. And um, one thing I was a little bit hasty to go uh, past is how do you identify the function of these keys? So, um, and let's look a little bit at the topology then. So for this row of keys, we have labels sitting in these display windows those labels will clearly tell what happens when you press this button. But on the new Master Key 36, that's the name of this one, the upgrade, um, we have a title section as well. So you see that bar, it says ME1 Preview Source. So generally, that will describe what this section does. And that's going to be useful. It also applies to the section just above, but that is by our design because I chose that um, I assigned the preview row here and the program row up here. This is also exposed by the title bar in the individual tiles right there. Okay, so for the upper displays, instead of putting a title bar, I could have done that, but instead of doing that, I decided to put mini tiles. Mini tiles are small areas that will provide a label for the upper buttons. So you see here it says, um, with this button, we are put into state number one. With this button, we are in state number two, and that would be ME2, ME3, ME4. In this state, I operate the auxiliary one and two bus, auxiliary three and four, auxiliary five and six, selects uh, media and macros, and routing. Here I have inactive panel, so if I press this one, I basically make the panel inactive, nothing happens when I press buttons. I can make it active again. And that was the cut button right there. If I uh, press this one, I have cut for ME2. You can see that in the label and so forth. Now, um, let's go back to the demonstration. So for instance, if I press this button, according to the label, I will now have access to ME2 on the switcher. So if I press uh, these buttons for the preview row, we will not see any change unless we go to Mix Effects 2 over here and you can see the effect of doing this. 
Okay. And the same goes if I go to ME3 and 4, that's the same story. Now, uh, you see the title labels uh, right there, they are updated, they now say ME2. Let's go to Auxiliary 1. So now it says Auxiliary 1 slash 2, so basically this is the label that I, I put manually to indicate that these rows are Auxiliary 1 and 2, and you see in those tiles, this is Auxiliary 1, this is Auxiliary 2 up here, I also decided to color code these sections to identify um, that I'm not cutting on the um, ME bus anymore, but I'm on the auxiliary bus. So the green is auxiliary one and the rose colored is auxiliary two. Again, I have all the labels pulled over from the ATEM switch. So camera one says clearly camera one. And if I want to change that label, I could go into uh, my label section here and change camera one. Um, uh, what? Um, camera X. Okay, so I save and you see instantly it's updated on the surface, of course it is. Now, um, if you want to see that this is actually switching on Auxiliary 2, we need to go here. And now you don't see those labels because in the Blackmagic world, this is the long label for those sources. So that's basically what it says right here. So I would need to change this to uh, Camera X if I wanted to see it as Camera X up here. But you now see as I press these buttons, I am changing sources on Auxiliary 2. If I hold down the Shift key, you see that I access sources like 13, 14, 15, Media Player 1 and 2, uh, Program 2, etc. Okay, same story when I go to Auxiliary 3 and 4. I just chose different color coding for convenience. Auxiliary 5 and 6, different color coding. And there you really see how the RGB buttons shine because you can use RGB colors to nicely organize your panel using colors to identify function groups. And that's really neat and useful. Uh, as a supplement to the display. So you see OLED displays go hand in hand with RGB coloring that you can all do from Unisketch to fit your liking. And in the end of this video, I'll show you how you could do that, for instance, to distinguish ME1 and ME2 from each other. But let's just continue and walk through the rest of the panel. So you see in this state, macro media, I decided to divide the controller just slightly differently. So over here in this section, I have macro playback. So all the macros I have in the ATEM switcher, uh, I can pull them up here. And again, you see how these macros, uh, the label, it says that when I press, it's like a run and stop. So uh, I can uh, run a macro uh, like this, run, and you see the macro is running. I can stop it again if I press twice. So it's like a toggle button. And all the labels for these macros are uh, also pulled out on the panel. There's one called fireworks. If we edit this one, to just fire work, save, you see instantly they are updated on the panel. So for the media player, we have media player one, media player two, and again, the shift key has been uh, utilized to change so that I, here I access media uh, one up to eight, and when I hold this down, yeah, I hold it down, then we have index nine, 10, 11, 12, and so forth. You see 13 to 16 are not available, and that's because in my media bank, I didn't put anything in 13, 14, 15, and 16. I only put some graphics into the first 12 uh, slots in the media bank. Finally, we have the router. So, in fact, the router is not even working with the ATEM switch. This is an example of why your universal broadcast controller from Skyhoy will integrate so many different broadcast devices uh, into a single control unit. And um, it, in other words, it means that uh, through the same single cable, this panel will work with an ATEM switcher and a video hub, and it could even be more items, but this is just for those two. So um, to, to show you that I actually do change stuff on the video hub, I have the uh, um, Blackmagic Smart Video Hub window here. So on the top row, I basically choose my output. So uh, in this case, I have selected output number four, which is called set one, okay? And then on this row down here, I can now assign sources to that output. So I uh, put now, uh, source number three, test three onto set one. Uh, you can see as I press any of these buttons and I can hold down the shift key to access more sources like 15, they are all routed to set one on, oh, I'm sorry, you didn't even see that on the video. So um, let me go back here, uh, just rewind a little bit. So um, yes, uh, we are looking at the router on the top row. I am selecting what is my output I am routing to. And um, you see the output I selected right now is called MON3, so this would be the one. Then if I press any of the input sources, then this will send 
uh, or route that input to monitor three. Okay. You can even press and hold these buttons to activate more outputs. So now I've activated output three, five, and six to be the destination whenever I route sources. And you see that now actually three outputs are affected by just this simple operation that I press and hold those buttons to select multiple outputs and I can send a single route to all those. That's pretty powerful. So if you actually combine that with the feature of, um, uh, what, what are we calling them, uh, presets? Yes, presets. We have integrated presets in our uh, video hub uh, um, implementation. So you can save a configuration on the router and then you can recall it again if you have like uh, three, four, or 10 outputs that you want to, uh, to route in a single button press. It's not implemented in, uh, in this case here on this controller. Okay, let's take a look at configuration. So how you handle configuration is you connect your controller to your uh, Skyhoy firmware updater, then it's uh, recognized by the port. You press online configuration, and when you do that, you will be sent online um, on a website where you can configure your controller. So this is the configuration page of my master key 36. And you see, I have two device cores installed, the ATEM switch and the video hub. You set up the IP addresses of those device cores in the bottom of the page. So there you go, ATEM and video hub IP addresses and the controller's own IP address. Now, uh, if I wanted to change anything about how this is done, I uh, route it, then I just press the button that I want to select. So if we want to see how do I select um, the output for the video hub, for instance, I can press uh, C1, which is this button, and then you will notice uh, here that uh, in this section in the router state, let me just disable all these other states so you are not uh, confused by those. In the router state right here, what happens when I press this button is it selects output number one to memory bank AA, or if I hold down the shift key, it's gonna be output uh, 13. Okay, so, uh, and that's, that's basically how Unisketch works. Now, what I thought could be fun was to show you how we can paint the ME2 uh, bus rows easily uh, with a different color in case we choose that and instead of doing that in the online interface which would require that a new firmware is being generated um, and which also holds the flexibility that we can add media we can add device cores and remove device cores and do all such things um, I rather want to do this on the local interface of the device because then we have instantly the effect of the change we just made. And that is uh, many times cooler or it's a supplement because it's a, a different thing uh, altogether. So uh, basically what I want to do is open the serial monitor and then I type in webconfig. So when I do that, I'm told that the controller is on this IP address, which I'll now copy and put into a web browser in a new tab. Okay, so new tab, here we go. And um, this is my controller live, okay? Now, what we should do is to um, open section 1C and, um, and then we should find the uh, ME2 section right there. So I want to paint section 1C, 2C and 3C, also 1A, 2A and 3A with a different color. Okay, so I go here, I select basically local color and then um, what should we choose for local color in this case? Let's say it's a blue one. We want a blue color. And now I have uh, set up a blue color for my uh, uh, ME2 row uh, when I save this uh, in this section only. So now we go to ME2 and you see it's white background color with red and green. So um, if I save this, we should see that we have a change to the background color in this section as soon as it has saved itself. Oh, okay, so it was this one down here. It was section 1A I did it to. It is now blue. And what we need to do is to simply take this action and then we copy it onto the other five sections. It's really quickly and easily done. Like that, we save. And as soon as it has saved the information, we should see that both rows are now colored blue instead of white as a background color. So we now we have a nice clear identification that we are on ME2 and not ME1. So this is ME1 and this is ME2. Ladies and gentlemen, the master key 36 in an example configuration taking um, leverage of the ATEM 
um, switches and a video hub. But of course, as you can imagine and see from what you have seen on the screen, you can configure it in so many other ways. <laughs>